Hello and welcome to Your Damn Jets. Uh, today, what I want to do is, uh, it's going to be in the lymphoma series, but I'm going to talk about uh, the protections I took to prevent COVID-19. Um, my disease has appeared just before the pandemic, so I've been undergoing treatment throughout the pandemic, and uh, COVID-19 was... Uh, an issue for me. So the the main uh, tool that I've used uh, besides the vaccine is uh, the masks. And very at the very beginning of the pandemic, uh, masks were in short supply, and my wife uh, knitted a bunch of of masks. This one is goes like this over your head, and then you bring it up and like this. And this was, I had a beard, a substantial beard at that time. It was filling out this mask. Um, so my wife made a whole bunch of masks for me. Uh, eventually the big beard disappeared. And I used a mask that uh, Johns Hopkins were providing me. So I went with like something like this, for instance. Uh, this is a mask provided by Johns Hopkins, and they provided a few of these uh, for me. Um, I didn't really need them, but they were nice. And there were at some point I was this is what I was wearing rather than my wife's mask. That I I like my wife's masks, but uh, my beard had had diminished quite a bit, and uh, these masks were more useful than those that my wife uh, had made initially. Um, Eventually, I upped my game with uh, the Delta Wave, and even before the Delta Wave. I upped my game before the CDC decided to start changing their recommendations. I bought uh, KN95 masks, and I wore those for a while. And the, the nice thing is that they have a clip at the top that you can press on your nose. Uh, and they're fairly comfortable and they ho offer a good protection. Um, but eventually, uh, I decided that it was not enough and I went with the gold standard, which is uh, the, you can see probably there, 3M, 3M uh, N95 masks, which I think are the, are the uh, well, if you're going to go with masks, uh, this is the Cadillac of the masks uh, right now. Um, I have seen some um, bizarre things like the razor mask and stuff like that, but I don't believe that it would be an improvement on anything. I've read reviews of them and uh, somebody was saying it's uh, like taping a mouse to your face. <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's ridiculous. Um, so the the KN95 is really the the mask to have. If you want to go beyond this, I think I wouldn't go with one of those stupid gaming masks. I would go with a hood, and you can have a hood, and you can have a filter in a pump when it's going to blow air into your face from the filter and send the air down the hood, and that would be even better than than this thing. Uh, but right now I use this and I put, uh, I, I, uh, I mark them, um, to remember which, which is which. Because in theory, these masks, if you're working in healthcare, for instance, uh, you're supposed, it's one, one use only. You use them once and then you throw them away. We've never done that uh, with any of our masks. Um, what we've done is that this cannot be washed. I don't think it can be washed. I don't think you can even microwave it or any, well, there's the metal there. You shouldn't microwave this thing. Uh, so we're, we're not washing them, but, uh, COVID, if you, if you, if COVID gets on the surface and you leave that surface alone for a few days, I don't know how many days you really need to. I typically leave them alone for three days to be on the safe side. And um, if you leave it alone for a while, the virus is going to just die by itself because a virus to live needs to be inside your body. It, it doesn't live on, on surfaces. It lives for a while, a little bit of time on surfaces, but it's not there uh, permanently. So I set them aside and then I reuse them. And... Uh, 
So yeah, I have my my bunch of KN95 masks, and these are the masks I prefer. The only thing I, I'm not super happy about it is that it has two straps at the back, and um, so it's a little bit more cumbersome to put on. Whereas the KN95, the straps are on the side, so it's easier to put on. Um, but at the same time, these straps do an excellent job of getting the mask to your face and keeping it tight. So it's kind of a trade-off. It's more cumbersome to put on. Like if you have somebody who is coming at you fast, you want to put it on fast, it's going to be a little bit more cumbersome, but uh, it's, it's a tighter fit, I think, than the KN95. Um, and beard-wise, yeah, I'm keeping the beard short right now um, to prevent... Uh, uh, problems with the can uh, the, the N95 or the can 95 uh, because it's supposed to fit tightly against your face so uh, these don't work well if you have a huge beard um, so I'm keeping it rather short it could, probably should be a little bit shorter than, than it is right now I'm due for a haircut but um, so yeah, the first the first things was was the mask, and in the hospital itself, when I had chemo or when I had uh, my stem cell transplant, usually I was maskless, uh, but all the staff around me had masks, uh, and I didn't catch COVID. Um, and actually, I uh, maybe that that's the punchline of uh, this video is that nobody in this house has got COVID yet. Uh, that we know, um, it would be possible to get a very mild case of COVID and not know it. I think some people are like in that situation, uh, but we don't have any evidence that either of us got COVID. So, um, at the hospital itself, I was tested a ton of times. I was I was I was admitted nine times for chemo so i was tested each time i was tested when i had the stem cell transplant i was tested before they put in my port i was tested here and there and everywhere in all kinds of situations when i was hospitalized before the chemo when i was hospital the, all the times that i was hospitalized it tested me um and it always came back negative um so that's also one reason we think nobody here has got even a mild case of covid um, I did get my vaccinations and I did get a booster shot, which I mentioned in another video, I think that was, uh, it was bungled. I'm immunocompromised, so I should not have gotten a, a booster shot. I should have gotten another primary shot. They make a distinction between booster shots and primary shots. Excuse me. They make a distinction between booster shots and primary shots. And it would have been better for me to get the primary shot. But after I got the booster shot and realized that they made a mistake and the oncologists and the, the pharmacists were on the mistake. All of them. They were all just talking to me about the booster shots. I got a booster shot. Um, but we did the antibody test after the booster shot and we found out that I was fine. So uh, I do have antibodies. Um, Eventually, I'd like to get Evusheld or Evusheld. I don't know how to pronounce it. Which is is it's it's like the vaccine, and it is in addition to the vaccine, but it is made especially for people who are immunocompromised. Uh, and I should be eligible for it, but so far, I mean, I know Johns Hopkins got it, but they haven't called me to 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 get it. Uh, so I don't know when I'm going to get it. Um. I've avoided congregating with people. Uh, we don't go, my wife and I, here in the house, it's just my wife and I. Uh, we don't have children in the house. We have, I have stepchildren. My wife has children from a previous marriage, but they're all grown and they're out of the house and they have, they have their own children. So I have four granddaughters. Um, we just don't congregate usually. The only, I, we've made two exceptions. Um, one exception was um, there was a little family gathering and uh, it was outside and I had my mask on. Um, I don't remember about my wife, but I had my mask on um, because those were the doctor's order. And actually the doctor's order 
even without COVID, if you're outside, uh, at this point, I don't think it matters so much. But they say if you're outside the house and you've had a stem cell transplant, and even without COVID, you're supposed to put the mask on. So I had my mask on. Um, and it was outside and it was fine. The other exception that we made um, was that we had our granddaughters, uh, the, the two eldest granddaughters, which are sisters, um, came and visited us. Uh, but before coming, uh, I arranged with their parents that they take a, a COVID test to make sure that they didn't show up at our house uh, ill and, you know, make sure they don't have any sniffles or anything because in my condition, I, I mean, it could kill me. Um, other than that, uh, so yeah, we don't congregate. Uh, the groceries are, they, at some point, they were delivered to our house. Um, they were delivered for a long time, but I've stopped the deliveries uh, because of DoorDash, who manages to uh, mangle everything. Um, and I have the story is in another video on, on my channel. Um, so we did delivery for a while. Now we're doing pickups where I go to Walmart and we also tried the local grocery store, but it didn't work out fine. We, we usually pick up at Walmart and that works, that works out pretty nicely. The, the problem with the local grocery store is that for deliveries, they use shipped and shipped is absolutely awful as far as the service goes. It's worse than DoorDash. I hate DoorDash, and I hate shipped even more. Um, so delivery didn't work out with the local uh, store. The other problems that I found is that we've been in the pandemic for about two years now, and they've learned nothing about how to create a nice website for customers to to order stuff um, and they seem to be under the model for them in their mind I, I think their model is like you order online some stuff may not be there and then you go run into the store and pick up what was not there and this this works kinda if you're not in a pandemic mode but if you're in the pandemic mode for me Going into the store and picking up the few things, is, it's about as bad as as just going into the store in the first place. I don't want to go into the store. I don't want to be around other folks. I don't want to catch COVID. So I, I get delivery. Uh, I You know, we tried to deliver with the local store. That didn't work out. And their, their model is not adapted for us. And even pick up, we tried pick up with the local store. And uh, the first week it worked pretty fine. The second week they have 25% of order was missing. And then I remembered why I, one of the reasons the first time I didn't go with them was because I think their, their website and their inventory are disconnected. It's like, well, yeah, we sell this product in theory, but when they come to and, and try to put it in your cart physically, it might not be available. And then they say, well, it's missing. And 25% of our order missing is too much. So I, we went back to Walmart. Uh, and with Walmart, we had one or two substitutions since I've done that. And it was sometimes I had to say, no, don't substitute because it, it, there were substituted stuff that was not really equivalent. Uh, it could have been equivalent, you know, it's cereal for another cereal, but my wife was picking a specific cereal for an ingredient and a recipe, and the other cereal was not, was not at all what she wanted. So I canceled that substitution, and otherwise the substitutions were, were usually fine. You know, one chicken for another chicken, my wife is fine. Uh, I'm vegetarian, she's not, so she eats chicken, and she didn't complain about that. Uh, so, so yeah, we, we avoid people. We don't go to restaurants. Uh, we order. And again, I had to stop ordering from Silver Diner because of DoorDash. Um, now we order pizzas. Uh, we may order other stuff, uh, later, but we have a, a pizzeria fairly close to the house and, and the food is good. Um, other things I did was, no strangers in the house, and that's been a bit hard on us um, because I don't want to have handymen in, in the house. 
So I was in the middle, I got the lymphoma while I was in the middle of my master bathroom remodel and the master bathroom right now is still not done. Um, I don't know when I'm going to go back to it. Uh, you know, I'm down. I right now I don't I don't feel that I should be going back to it right this moment, even though I'm doing fairly well. Um, I don't know what's gonna make me decide to go back to it. Uh, so so that has completely stopped. And 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 my wife initially was saying, "Well, if you want to have people finish it, then we can do it." And I was thinking, oh yeah, we are going to have all those workers in the house ready to give us COVID. Great idea. Um, unfortunately, we did have uh, one worker, maybe two, I don't remember, but at least one worker in the house. And for the uh, water heater replacement that I couldn't do myself. At that point, I just couldn't. I, I normally I would consider doing it myself, but at that point I was I, I I think I was not diagnosed yet with lymphoma and I was in a very pitiful state and I just thought no I can't I cannot do that myself. Um. So what I did was I blocked. So of course the water heater is in the basement uh, with the, the, the where the the hint, heat pump unit is. We have the heat pump outside and there's a, a furnace unit inside. Uh, and of course there are ducts there and there's stuff blowing air all over the house. So what I did is like okay this guy is gonna come on that day and so I prepared the place. I blocked the ducts that were in that area to prevent the air from going inside. Um, I put an exhaust fan at that time. It was, uh, probably late summer or early, early fall or something like that. So the temperatures were fine. I just put an exhaust fan in the window of the machine room to blow air out of that machine room. So it was pushing air out of the room. Um, and I told the guy not to disturb it. Um, after he did the job, I also condemned the basement for a while. I think maybe it, it was maybe a week. So the cats, we had to move the litter boxes of the cats uh, into the dining room um, because normally they go into the, the basement. Um, and that was fine. Um, we also had the delivery at some point. I'm trying to remember how many people came into the house. We had the delivery of furniture at some point for the master bedroom. And we had delayed that as much as possible. But at some point, the company we were dealing with, uh, they were very accommodating. But, uh, you know, eventually it's like, we're going to make you pay for, for storage. Uh, so uh, we said, okay, come come in and put them in the basement. And they were able to come through the back door and then go through the whole house. You know, they were able to come through the back the black back sliding doors and put the stuff in the basement and again i think at that time i condemned the basement for a while uh zeno was seen by a veterinarian during uh the pandemic he had a bout of uh vertigo and then when he came back from that i we did put him in quarantine um because cats can catch COVID and I don't know what the veterinary place, how, what their protocols are. And, you know, so, so we put him in, in quarantine for a, a little bit and he was not happy about the quarantine, but, uh, I think it, it helped me, it helped him in, in two ways. First of all, not getting, giving us COVID and he probably didn't get COVID because he looked fine. Um, but, um, also he had vertigo and I think being isolated from Meadow, uh, was good for him because she couldn't, you know, sometimes they fight a little bit together. And, uh, at, at first I think he was more annoyed, but he's gotten used to it and he's enjoying the fights more now. Uh, sometimes I see him run after her. Uh, but at that time it was really bad for him because he had vertigo and I, you know, it would have been bad if Meadow had decided to just jump on him. Uh, it would have been completely de defenseless. See, that cat couldn't run. At that time, that cat, if he had tried to run and escape, he would have run two steps and fallen over. Um, so I think it was good for him too. Even though he didn't like him. Uh, he didn't like it. Um, I, I kind of got, went over my point, <laughs> my points out of order. Um, 
And now uh, we have we have home tests uh, that we have never used so far, but we have home tests at home. Uh, we have a few, uh, and we have more on order from USPS. I don't know when they're going to deliver it, and I really don't know at what rate we can order those tests because we're supposed to be able to get eight tests a month, and we've ordered less than that from the USPS. And I don't know if it was a one deal, one time deal, or if they're going to offer more. Or I, I have no idea. I should look into it. But uh, yeah, we do have home tests now. Uh, so if we have symptoms, uh, we could um, use a test to check whether we have COVID or not. Uh, and so far, all those uh, procedures have worked. Um, no, None of us in this house can say we've had mysterious symptoms or that we had an actual positive COVID test. I have a, I had a ton of negative tests and I think my wife probably haven't, hasn't had a test ever, uh, because she escaped all of that, uh, no surgery, no special procedure done on her. So she's been able to escape the tests, but, uh, right now we, there's no COVID in this house and, and we're trying to, to keep it this way. Um, so I hope uh, this has been useful and uh, maybe you've learned some uh, some things, some ideas on how to get the workers in your house if you need to have workers. I know some people have had workers and I don't know how how they managed uh, to prevent. Uh, I mean, I, sometimes I know that they were not in the house when the workers were there. So that, that also helps. But this is our only house. So I guess we could go to a hotel, but. That's not what they did. So sometimes they were not in the house when the workers were there and they were able to avoid getting COVID that way. Um, but there may be other uh, solutions. Um, and it depends on how your house is laid out also, you know. So I we've seen some very big houses when we're buying this house. We've been some, some, we've seen some very big houses and there were places where I think you could have kind of isolated the workers from the rest of the house. You could have put something on the door you know, uh, put plastic around the door and, and told them to enter by another door and they would have been fine uh, just working there. But in this house, is this is a rather small house. We went for the bigger lot. We have almost nine acres of land. So we went for the bigger lot and the smaller house um, rather than a big house on a tiny lot. And... Um, so here it's more challenging to try to get the workers uh, to be out of our way. Uh, but we managed uh, and we're hoping to continue to manage. And eventually, probably, you know, the the scientists are saying, you know, most people are going to get COVID at some point. And we're, you know, we're probably going to get COVID eventually. Um, but I'm hoping that it's going to be uh, far enough into the future um, that the treatments for it are going to be better. You know, it's going to be more like the cold or the flu where you get it and you recover from it and you may not even need to go to the hospital rather than getting it and going to the hospital uh, and maybe dying from it. Um, because the flu, for instance, for me, the flu is is about just as dangerous as COVID. Um You know, uh, I, I I could, and especially earlier on, closer to my stem cell transplant, if I would have gotten the flu at that time, now I'm vaccinated for the flu also, but if I had gotten it at that time, it could have been serious, very, very serious. And I've read stories of people uh, with, who has stem cell transplants and got infection after infection, and they had to go to the hospital because they had infections, and I'm I'm really sad about that. Oh, and another thing I should mention is that uh, we've upped our, our hand washing game also uh, since the beginning of the pandemic. That I, I bought a lot of, of sanitizer and I have a sanitizer right here on, on, on the table. Um, we've upped our game considerably and we also have, we have not gotten the flu during that time. Uh, not that we're getting the flu regularly, we're getting vaccinated for the flu every year, but... Um, you know, uh, our hand washing regimen is, uh, 
tighter than it was. And in the very beginning of the pandemic, I had I had rashes on my hands because I was using a lot of soap, and I need to use Dove for my hands. That's that's it. I need to use unscented Dove soap because of the scented soap. Uh, really, it, it massacres my hands. So most of the time right now I use a sanitizer, but at the very beginning of the pandemic, I used a lot of soap and my hands were, were got a beating. <laughs> I had to stop using the soap that I was using and buy Dove or use hand sanitizer. So that's it. If you have... Uh, suggestions opinions stories uh, you can always put them in the comments um i do read them and i do respond to them um but uh, for now i'm gonna say goodbye and uh, see you in uh, another episode